Hi, welcome to the Noise Path. In this episode, we're going to do another repair potential upgrade. Now, this is a Tech VPI interface, which I'm sure by now you're familiar with. It's the modern interface that Tektronic uses in all of their latest oscilloscopes, the 4, 5, and 6 series, which have done extensive reviews and teardowns here on the channel. It's a pretty nice interface, allows you to connect a whole range of different probing solutions that Tektronic has created with this particular interface. It has an analog I.O., which is for, of course, the analog channels of the oscilloscope. It also has a digital I.O., which would the appropriate probe becomes a logic analyzer independent on every channel and you can go back and forth between them by setting the probe configuration. There's also a low speed I2C interface built into it which communicates with the probe head and grabs calibration coefficients, model numbers and essentially tells the oscilloscope what is connected to this. It's nice, I've gotten used to it and it works very well. But there's also a lot of existing probes on the market that use the older interface, for example, like this one. This is a Tektronix P6703B, which is an optoelectric converter, 1.2 gigahertz of bandwidth. That is a you know, fairly unique probe. As a result, once you connect it, the oscilloscope needs to know exactly what it is. And in order for these probes to still be useful, Tektronix has created this TPA-BNC converters that convert the Tech VPI to the older interface. And this is more than just a pass-through. It has its own little microprocessors that reinterprets the interface and allows essentially a flexibility to a whole bunch of older models. Now, I have one that I've had for a very long time, and I bought one recently from eBay that is behaving quite a bit differently. Let me show you. And this is what the oscilloscope reports on the working adapter. You can see that the model number is correct. It does have a serial number and the version is 1.7. But if I go to the other one I recently bought from eBay and I go over here, you can see that the probe type is listed at I squared C fixed chair and the serial number is kind of gibberish and the version is 1.1. So I wonder if this is because this was an earlier model or something's gone wrong with the firmware, but we've had pretty good luck at switching the firmware and upgrading some of the other probes I've repaired on the channel. So we may as well try that. Now if I go back to channel two, and actually go ahead and plug in my optoelectric converter probe to it, you can see that it does detect it very nicely. It does tell me the probe type and it, it adjusts the attenuation correctly. But if I do exactly the same thing on the other probe converter and plug it in, it doesn't even know. It can't tell that that is even connected. No information has changed. So there's something definitely going on there. It's worthwhile taking it apart. So let's see what kind of interface we're actually dealing with. This is the Tech Probe BNC, which I'm interested in reusing. That's the optical probe that I showed you. And if you look at this, it has quite a few different power supplies that it has to provide to the various probes. For example, it has plus and minus 15, plus and minus 5. But the new Tech VPI doesn't have many of these power supplies directly coming out of the oscilloscope. In fact, the interface really only has one 12 volt supply and a 5 volt supply for the logic. And therefore, whatever you connect inside that adapter has to actually generate all these different power supplies. And that's quite a bit of complication and explains some of the additional engineering required in that module. So with this knowledge now, we can take a look what's inside of that. And here's the probe outside of its casing. It consists of several different PCBs, nicely compact together. And the job of these PCBs is to produce the different power supplies, create the interfaces, and some of the offset voltage generation. So it's really mixed signal. There's actually a cage on top of this as well, which I've removed so we can see the Atmel processor underneath. This is what talks to either probe on both sides. Now in the middle, we don't do anything to the analog signal. As to be expected, it goes right through because you don't really want to touch that anyway. That's coming from the probe. On this side, this board is our DC-DC converter. There are in fact four in here. They have to generate plus five, minus five, and plus and minus 15. Each of those are then followed by a linear regulator to create a cleaner signal that you can pass to the probe. So there's a lot going on here. And on this side, we do have a DAC as well, which DAC is controlled by the processor, creates some of the offset voltages. And this is the interface to the older probe. And this touches the probe for the Tech VPI interface. So it's really quite nice. Now, there usually is a connector here where you can read and write to this, but this connector is not populated in this one. So I went ahead and I soldered cables to these and I extracted them and I actually took the firmware out. You can see the little bit of soldering left here. This pin is actually not connected to anything, so this short doesn't really matter. So now we should be able to replicate this into the other probe. Now, Tektronix oscilloscopes don't really care if two probes have the same serial number. So you don't even have to worry about the serial number colliding because you have to do the checksum and everything if you want to change something in the code. But yeah, looks quite nice, really compact. As to be expected, there's a lot that has to fit in this tiny space. And if you're curious, here are the two components of the Atmel processor. It has a built-in EEPROM, and you can see in the EEPROM right over here, there's actually the serial number of the probe. And then if you modify this, you have to make sure that the checksum and everything adds up. And this is the, the new firmware. Uh, this is version 1.7 that, that they copied out of the other probe. So this is going to make these two probes essentially identical because their hardware is already identical. So hopefully now both should be able to detect our other probe. 
and they both now work, which is quite nice, and they present themselves at exactly the same serial number to the instrument. But as soon as you connect something else to it, and it has its own EEPROM, it takes over the serial number anyway, so it's not an issue. And now we can use some of the older probes. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that because this thing has built-in DC-DC converters and produces these different power supply voltages, the ADCs inside of the Atma processor are constantly monitoring the voltages of those converters. And in case there's a short circuit or a problem, it actually disables the entire switching converters, which is a nice touch. It prevents any damage to the scope and certainly prevents damage to the DC-DC converters. That's one of the nice things about having this complexity in here. Now, I know you also want to see this up to electric probe in action, but that's actually a subject of a different video. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it's a good time to do it now because I'm going to be a whole bunch of cool experiments using this probe in a totally different video. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comment section. See you next time.